So it says you can make $940 a month in passive income. It only takes three simple steps. Yeah, that, that sounds legit. <laughs> What's going on y'all, it's Jeff. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're talking about a topic that I haven't talked about on this channel for a hot minute. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. And that topic is passive income because we all want to make money while we are laying by the beach or chilling in the bed, binging out on Stranger Things or The Mandalorian. Have you seen that baby Yoda? He is so dang cute. By now we all know that making passive income is not that easy. You do know that, right? It takes a sizable investment. It also takes time to generate dividends or interest to earn passive income. Or if you're starting a business, it's going to take time to build the team, to build the processes where you're making money on the side without doing a ton of work. So when I came across this article in Forbes talking about how you can make $940 a month in passive income, it definitely got my attention. I wanted to find out why. And after reading it over and it sharing that the way to do this is that you just have to follow three simple steps. Well, I wanna talk about what these steps are and also share my thoughts on why it might not be that simple. Now, the first thing that you'll notice about the title of this article, the official title, it's how to invest a hundred thousand dollars to generate that $940 a month of passive income. Now, if you don't have a hundred thousand dollars to invest, don't check out now because there's still a lot that you can learn from what I'm going to share in this video. Because the investment strategy that is outlined in this article is something that you can do, anybody can do, and you could pull this off in your Robinhood account, your Webull account, your M1 finance account, any online brokerage for that matter. The first thing that I want Want to point out with this $940 a month with a $100,000 investment, you still have to be making a pretty salty dividend yield. Hmm. That is salty and vinegary. This large of a dividend yield is not very common, especially right now with interest rates at historic lows. The 10 year treasury right now is 0.86%. The average dividend yield on the S&P 500 is around 1.6 to 1.7%. I finally made off Robinhood's cash management product. It's basically their online high yield savings account and that's paying a whopping 0.3%. Robinhood, thanks so much for making me wait so long to get into that. 0.3%, ooh. <laughs> so any investment that's paying 11.3%, a 11.3% dividend, that's definitely going to get your attention. Side note, you can check out my other video where I talk about a cryptocurrency savings account that's paying 8.6%. Not quite 11.3, but it's pretty dang close. And more than Robinhood. So how in the world are you able to make an 11.3% dividend yield. Well, we're gonna find out by going through the steps in this article as it outlined. All right, the first step is pretty easy. Step one is open a brokerage account. Now, if you already have a brokerage account, you can go ahead and execute the strategy in whatever account you already have. But if you don't have a brokerage account, what well, you do need one, it is required to execute this strategy because we are purchasing a security traded on the US Stock Exchange. If you're not sure where to go, don't worry, I got you. I'll have a link in the description to my blog that outlines some of the best online brokers that you can open an account today. If you wanna do this strategy and also get some free money in the process, then also check out Webull. Right now they got a pretty pretty sweet promotion that will give you up to three free stocks by opening an account and depositing a very small amount with them. Once again, I'll have a link in the description for Webull, check them out, open an account, deposit some money, get free stocks. Now the article also includes transferring that $100,000 as part of step one. Obviously, if you don't have that, we're not doing that. But if you are opening an account with an online broker, like a Robinhood, you know, with that 0.3 cash management, or Webull where you're getting your free stock, you might not have that $100,000, but you can transfer a small amount and still execute on this strategy. Okay, step two is buying a closed end fund. Now, the article isn't that generic where it just says buy any closed end fund. It does give you a very specific recommendation. The closed end fund that it tells you to buy is the Gabelli Equity Trust Fund. The symbol on this is GAB. At the time of this recording, the fund was trading at $5.32 per share. Now, this is part of the three steps that I do have a particular issue with. Not so much the Gabelli Equity Trust Fund, more the fact that it's a closed end fund. I I just don't want to interfere the steps here. We're on step two, we got one more to go, but I'm going to share what my beef with closed end funds are here in a second. And trust me, you're going to want to wait for that. So if you thought step one and step two were easy, well, step three actually is the easiest. Step three is wait 
two months. Sit back and wait. So the way the author breaks this down, we've got the $100,000. Now based off of the price of the Gabelli Equity Trust Fund at the time the author wrote this, he's able to pick up 18,867 shares. The dividend per share is 15 cents. So that means every single quarter, every single 90 days, you're going to make $2,830.05 or just over 11,200 for the year or monthly that comes out to just over $940 per month. And in case you're curious, this is what $940 looks like. Mmm, gosh, I wonder if the dividend check smells just as good as cash. <sighs> you definitely have to appreciate the title, the headline of that article, how to make $940 a month of passive income with a $100,000 investment. When it breaks down the steps and you start seeing like how simple it is, like, oh yeah, like I can do this, anybody can do this, you know, if you have $100,000. As I mentioned, I don't really have the issue with the actual investment, the Gabelli Equity Trust Closed-End Fund. What I have more of an issue with is closed-end funds in general, because if you don't know anything about them and you actually take $100,000 and put it into a closed-end fund, or if you're just starting to invest for the first time and you're taking all your money and putting it into a closed-end fund and you don't know how it works, well, you might look at a statement one day or open up your investment app on your phone and see what in the world happened to my money. What the hell? And while closed-end funds have similar characteristics as a mutual fund and an ETF, they're just a completely different beast. So the first issue that I have with closed-end funds is that they are so dang volatile, which means that the stock price, the share price is going all over the place. And why that's a big deal is that anytime you have an investment that is paying such a high dividend, most investors equate that, or they start thinking of that as more of a bond, more of a secured type investment. And trust me, that is not what a closed-end fund is. One of the main reasons why closed-end funds are so volatile is because the way that share prices are determined. With mutual funds and ETFs, if somebody is buying more shares, if an investor, if you are buying more shares of a mutual fund or ETF, the issuing company just issues more shares. But whenever a closed fund comes to market, whenever it issues for the first time, however many shares are made in that initial offering, that is it. So whenever you are buying and selling, they're not making new shares, they're not redeeming new shares, you're basically just buying and selling from other people that own the exact same closed-end fund. The volatility on closed-end funds is not specific to just the Gabelli Equity Trust Fund. I found this article on US News, the headline, the top seven closed-end funds for 2020. And I just picked one of the random ones that it recommended. One of those is the Aberdeen Total Dynamic Dividend Fund. And right now this is trading at about $7.30 with a dividend yield of 9.2 or 9.2. 0.3% at the time of this recording. Now, if you look at this closed-in fund for the last six months or a year, I mean, you're not seeing a ton of volatility. But if you go to Google Finance, type in the symbol AOD, and then pull up the max chart on this thing, you can see what I'm talking about. Back in 2007, this closed-end fund was trading at $42 a share. Right now, it's trading at seven. There have been no dividend splits or stock splits along the way. That's how much the share prices dropped. The Gabelli Equity Trust Fund isn't much different. If you go to Google Finance, you can see that back in 1997, it was trading at just over $11 a share. Do you remember the share price now? It's $5 and 30 cents. So it's down about 50% over the last 20 years. Once again, no stock splits, like that is what the price has dropped. But Google Finance only goes back to 97. The Gabelli Equity Trust Fund actually issued back in 1988 and the issue price was $8 per share. So imagine buying an investment, buying an IPO, that was $8 a share in 1988. And now 2020, it's trading at $5.30. But you're still getting that dividend. Now, one of the main reasons why closed-end funds are so volatile in price and why they're able to pay such a high dividend yield is because of leverage. They are borrowing a lot to buy more investments that are paying a high dividend yield so that they can pay their investors a lot. So the one thing you have to consider is that if this fund 
is paying 11.3% on its dividend yield. That is the net payout, meaning that that's what investors make. That's what you and I make if we buy this fund. But this fund takes money to run it. You also have people, the manager, the CEO, all the top executives that are running and taking care of the team that are running this fund. Like they have to get paid too. So to cover all of their costs, they have to generate well and above 11.3% return so that they can make money and keep the lights on. So that means that they are taking a considerable amount of risk. Because if you're making north of 11%, you're not buying the dividend dividend blue chip stocks that grandma is comfortable with. Hitler would not want to see when he breaks into a house. Rob! Naked grandma! I get it, leverage isn't always a bad thing. I understand as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, that if you're going to borrow money at a smaller interest rate, and you can invest that and make a lot more, that is a win-win. It's just important as you, the investor, you understand how they are generating such a high return. As I mentioned, this fund is about a 25% leverage, but if you're looking at another closed-end fund that could be paying a lot more, you want to know how much they have leverage. And I'm not the only one that feels this way. Fellow YouTuber and personal finance expert, Joseph Hogue, had this to say about leverage on closed-end funds. Most closed-end funds use huge amounts of leverage. Borrowing to invest more than the assets uh, to boost those returns. And the third and final reason why I have such a beef with closed end funds is that as a former financial advisor, especially early on in my career, I saw these things sold. I mean, not as bad as boiler room. You couldn't close a f***ing window. But you have to consider how these things were sold. I can remember that I would always get these offer sheets that would give you all the features and benefits of all these different closed end funds. And you would see what are their holdings and what's the dividend that they're going to pay and what are the projections on how this thing's gonna perform over the next three to five years. But what was also included on this offer sheet was how much you got paid for every single share that you sold. So if you knew if a client bought $5,000, $10,000, $100,000 of this closed end fund, you knew exactly what your commission was going to be. I can remember walking through the brokerage firm that I started with and hearing other brokers on the phone and they were pitching these things like they were the greatest thing since sliced bread. But the part that I really didn't like is whenever the client would buy these, they wouldn't see that commission. They wouldn't see any of those upfront costs. All they would see was the dividend yield. But remember the Gabelli Equity Trust Fund, how it issued at $8 a share back in 1988? Well, using that example, if the client paid $8 a share and they're getting that dividend six months, nine months, maybe a year later, now they see that share price is dropped from $8 down to $7 to $6, $5.30. It typically never got back to that original issue price. And sure, buying any investment that's paying you a 6%, 7%, maybe 8% dividend yield, like that's attractive. And maybe you're okay with the fact that the price drops a little bit. But if you're comparing an investment that back in 1988 issued at $8 per share and today is trading at $5.30, per share. And if you compare that to any dividend stock, and maybe that dividend is only paying 2%, 3%, or 4%, but you've seen that stock appreciate over time. That's how you make money in the market. It's not always just about the dividend. What you want to see is appreciation and a dividend yield on top of that. That's what you call is having your cake and eating it too. Now I know in this case, like we're not buying this thing as an IPO or when it issues, like it's already been in the market for 30 plus years. And right now it is trading at about its low. I think the lowest it's ever been is in that $4 range. So this is something that I would feel more comfortable with buying now. But if you're ever being pitched closed end fund at issue, you gotta stay away. But yeah, this is something right now, if you're looking for a decent dividend, now, now would I put a hundred thousand dollars in this? Uh, absolutely not. But full disclaimer, full disclosure, I have a Robinhood account that I'm doing for this Grow Your Dough Challenge. That account has a balance right now of about $200,000. And I did just pick up some of this fund. And I just put about $5,000 in. So would I put a hundred thousand dollars in, I might do a hundred thousand dollars if I had say two million to invest. But uh, if I had a million, would I put a hundred thousand dollars? No. If I had two hundred thousand dollars, would I put five thousand dollars in? Yes, I would because I did. So lesson learned, closed end funds 
aren't always horrible. Not, not always. It, it definitely depends on when you get in. And even though I just mentioned that this particular fund, this close in fund is trading near its all time low. Well, it's all time low prior to here recently wasn't that low. So it could go below the $4 per share. And I do remember, and I couldn't find the name of this closed end fund, but I mean, I think this thing ended up going uh, kaput. I mean, the thing just went bankrupt. That closed end fund was about, I think it was mostly invested into financial stocks. It's going back to the, the 2008 financial crisis when this thing just bombed. So they are risky. They are not a bond. They are kind of like a mutual fund, kind of like an ETF, but they're just a little more harder to understand. So they're kind of like a mutual fund, kind of like an ETF, but they're just a little bit more difficult to understand. Kind of like that relative that always makes a big deal about any family function. Just like, what's the point? Like, don't even invite them. They're just annoying. All right, if you found this video useful, helpful, or entertaining, go ahead and smash that like button, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you know the next video it's on its way. Also, be sure to take advantage of that special offer that Webull is offering right now. This is a limited time offer. This is going to the middle of November 2020, depending on whenever you are watching this. As of right now, you get three free stocks if you open an account with them and then deposit some money. Don't worry, it's not $100,000. There'll be a link in the description. If you do click that link and then sign up through my link, I do get compensated. I do appreciate anybody that goes through any of the links that I offer here on the channel. All right, y'all, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.